from classics to children's books. You never know what she's going to cook when Russian makes novel mom. Hey everybody and welcome back to Novel Moms. This week it's the Super Bowl. So of course I have to do Super Bowl food. We're going to do barbecue. We're going to do one of my personal favorite barbecue meals which is pulled pork with gluten-free cornbread and coleslaw. It's like the perfect, perfect barbecue nest. Perfect for the game or just a weekend where you want to feed a bunch of people and have a yummy food and hang out and have fun. But here's the thing, I couldn't come up with a book this week. Usually I can come up with something to associate it with. I think last week I, or sorry, I think last year I did the Hunger Games with Super Bowl. <laughs> so I don't know, what book would you associate with this meal? And if I pick your suggestion, I will send you a little postcard or something in the mail to thank you as like a little prize. So comment, put your suggestion down below. Okay, so we're making pulled pork. Now, usually when you make pulled pork traditionally in terms of barbecue, you put it on the smoker low and slow for hours. We don't have hours, but we have some, just not as many as it would take for that. And I'm gonna make it in my Dutch oven, which is a big heavy pot that you can put in the oven. But you could do this in your slow cooker, you could do this in your pressure cooker, and I'll give you the time adjustments at the very end. So the first thing we need to do is start the pork because again it takes about four hours. This is, um, I think it's about a three and a half pound pork shoulder and I'm going to leave the bone in because that will give it more flavor. And what I'm going to do to start is I'm going to put a dry rub on it which is a pretty common, and it all depends on what area of the country you're in, whether they use a dry rub or a wet um, kind of sauce to baste it in. And you literally want to rub this into the meat. It's going to give it amazing flavor. It's going to season it. It's going to get deep in there. And it's going to give you like a little crust, which is going to add to some texture and some extra caramelization, which will be a delicioso. So I'm just going to rub this mixture. And this is something that I put together. It's some brown sugar and some different herbs and spices, and I'll list those right here. And we're just going to rub it, rub it, rub it, rub it, rub it. You could actually rub this and to, for extra flavor. You could leave this in your refrigerator for a couple hours before you actually cook it. But we're not going to do that. All right, so I've got all that beautiful rub in there. Fucking shot, the batteries are dying. Oh. Take it off here. Just you have to take the bottom me. off. Yes, that didn't help me one bit taking it off the thing. Okay. So I have this Dutch oven, which is essentially a big cast iron pot with an enamel coating, which is excellent for cooking things long for a couple hours in the oven at a slower rate, or sorry, at a, um, and it'll take a lot less time than your slow cooker, and I think the flavor is a lot better because of the way that the heat works, but that's just me. But again, you could do this in, in different methods, but I'm using my Dutch oven, and I've heated up some olive oil in the bottom of the Dutch oven. I'm going to take that beautiful pork. And I just want to sear both sides. I'm going to let that sit in that oil for about a minute. And then I'm going to flip it over. All right, so I'm going to flip that over. Woo see that beautiful brown crust on there? That's going to give us so much more flavor. Even though we're going to cook it in juices and things, but that brown crust is going to add so much more flavor to our overall dish. All right, so now this process is called braising. It's where you sear in both sides of the meat, and then you're going to put some cooking liquids with it. So give that about another 30 seconds, and I'm going to start in on chopping up my onion that I'm going to use. 
But you could really use whatever kind of onions you have in, on hand. That's fine. But I'm just using half of a, about a half of a red onion. And these are just basically going to disintegrate into my dish. So I don't have to worry about them being too raw or too big pieces because they're going to just basically melt into the meaty goodness. Okay, now I'm using beer, of course, you know me, I use beer. But you could use um, apple, I would recommend like an apple cider or apple juice if you're not going to use beer because that has that same kind of just deep, wonderful flavors. But I'm just going to pour this whole bottle of beer in here. I'm also going to add in some, um, I'm using rice vinegar, you could use white wine vinegar, you could use apple cider vinegar. I'm going to put in about a half a cup. And you might say, what is the purpose of vinegar? That's kind of weird, but it kind of balances out all the other flavors, and it's going to be delicious, I promise you. I'm going to put in a couple of shakes of Worcestershire sauce, or Worcestershire, if you want to be particular. And all of those onions that we put in there, that we cut up, all those pretty onions. In terms of liquid, you want it to come up no higher than about halfway up on the, the height of the meat in the pan. You don't want to cover it. All right, and last but not least, Garlic, of course. Just a couple of cloves. I'm going to mince them up. You could uh, obviously do garlic powder if you want. And the reason I'm chopping it up so small, even though it's going to disintegrate, because remember, the smaller something is when you chop it and add it to something, the more flavor you're going to get out of it, because there's more surface area. All right, this is boiling. All I'm going to do is put a lid on this. I've got my oven at 350 and I'm going to stick it in there and I'm not going to touch it for about four hours. All right, so in my family, you're either a macaroni person, macaroni salad person, or you're a coleslaw person. I prefer coleslaw. Others do not. <laughs> I'm going to take this big old head of ugh, green cabbage, regular old cabbage. You could use red cabbage if you wanted something prettier. You could combine the two for like a pretty color. All right, so I'm just taking a half a head of cabbage, and I'm just cutting out that stem. So I cut a diagonal cut there. I cut a diagonal cut there. Voila. All right. Up a carrot. College that wanted to make a carrot cake once. She saw that the recipe said grated carrot. So she went and she bought those baby carrots, the ones that were already like this big. And she couldn't figure out how she was going to grate it. She, she put each of the carrots on the end of a little fork and grated them that way, which you could do in a pinch, but she didn't get that carrots actually came. <laughs> we can't all be geniuses. All right. That's probably good. Some pretty color. You could do some radishes in there. Would give it like a nice little peppery bite. All of that mixed together. And I'm gonna put a little bit, just like the vinegar we put into the pork, and this will complement that really well. I'm gonna put about two tablespoons of vinegar in my cabbage before I add all the other stuff because I want it to kind of marinate in it and get the flavor. I'm also gonna put in a little salt and pepper. I'm also going to put in a little salt and pepper. Now, basic, right? You could probably eat it just like that. Maybe a little garlic powder or something. But here's what we're going to do, people. Because you know me, I can't just do pulled pork and cabbage. Oh, we're going to make our own mayonnaise, people. Un egg. Just one egg, whole egg. I'm going to put into my little container. And you may say to yourself, why would I do that? Why wouldn't I just buy it at the grocery store? Because A, it's nice to know how to make it if you need some in a pinch. You can't run out of time to run out. And B, I think it's more fun to make your own stuff. Tastes better. Three quarters of a cup of canola oil. If you want to use um, olive oil, you could do that, but they call it an aioli, which whatever. And I'm also going to add in, this is some whole grain stone mustard. Um, I believe I bought it at Ikea. It's delicious. And I'm just going to add that in. It's loud. It's 
about a tablespoon. Just gives it a little extra flavor. If you don't use that, you could use some dried mustard, but it does give it a little bit of an extra flavor. We're going to put in a little salt. I like to put in a little pepper. And this is when the magic happens. Okay. I've got my handy dandy little boat motor mixer that my husband bought me. Um, you can get these fairly cheaply at Walmart and they're useful. Remember we used it in our soup? We're going to use it in here. So here's what you want to do. You're going to submerge the whole thing, then start moving it and blending it. You know what you should totally do? Pull it up out of the mayonnaise before you turn it off. That would be awesome. So, okay. Let's say this. There's raw egg in there. I, I, you saw me do it. it. There's no mystery there. But, they're really not as dangerous as you think. However, I want to put that out there that if you are concerned or, or you have any type of misgivings at all about it, they do sell what they call irradiated eggs in the grocery store that um, the government has, there's a process they use to reduce the potential uh, salmonella and that kind of thing. And if this bothers you and you don't want to do this, please, 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 please use regular. But this is amazing. That's all I'm going to say about that. Which, by the way, is all the more reason to buy local, fresh, good eggs. That's all I'm going to say. All right, but now we get to mix it in. Put it in. The flavor is ridiculously good. It's got that creaminess. You got the little tiny flavor from the from the um, mustard that's in there. I'm gonna put in like an extra little pinch of salt. And now I'm gonna set this in the refrigerator because the longer it kind of the cabbage absorbs that that beautiful mayonnaise and all the spices and the seasonings and all the wonderful stuff that's in there, it's gonna taste even. Better. So I'm going to put this in the fridge and cover it until um, it's time to take the pork out. So when I see you again, it'll be time for pulled pork. Go team! Who are you rooting for? Right. Are you rooting it's for time to take right. the meat out. And this is a great example that you really need to just kind of keep an eye on it. I checked it about halfway through and I noticed it was probably going to be cooking a lot faster than I had thought. It was actually more like three hours than four. Whoa. So let's take a look. Ooh, doggy. All right, so I am going to drain off that liquid and set it aside. At least as, mo as much of it as I can get out without losing all the meat here. All right. And as you can see, it's fallen off the bone. Look at that. <sighs> all right. All right, so now, you can do this on a cutting board. It's probably easier just to do it in the, the dish that it's in. And just take two forks and it should just fall right apart. So I'm just using two forks to kind of shred it. And chunks if you wanted to. And that's really when you know it's done. You could check for an internal temperature of 190, but pretty much you can tell that it's done when it, it's falling off the bone. Like you could put a fork in there and notice that it just comes and cuts right through this this beautiful roast. For a lot of people may be intrepidatious. Yes, I've been intrepidatious about serving things with be cooked with beer. That all cooks out in the oven, so you don't have to worry about it being um, something your kids shouldn't have, etc. But there are other options, like I said. And if you want to do this in your slow cooker, I would just do it on high for about six hours. Pressure cooker, probably more than like an hour, uh, an hour and a half on high. All right, so they don't have to be completely shredded. You can leave some chunks in there, but you've got this gorgeous pork. But the flavor is ridiculous. I'm going to pour just a little bit of this juice back in, just to keep it moist. And the rest of this, I'm going to save and make soup tomorrow. You don't even know. You don't even know. I'll absorb all those juices. Now you may be saying to yourself, that's not barbecue. It's just roasted pork, braised pork, but 
what typically you would find in a barbecue restaurant is they would serve it the pork like this, and then you can put whatever kind of sauce you want on it afterward. So instead of using a bun, I am gluten free. I made some cornbread that was gluten free, and I'm going to put that recipe down below. You could use a bun. You could put this over rice. You could put this over mashed potatoes, whatever you want. Typically, it would be like a nice um, hard roll. Um, I used some cornbread that I made earlier that is completely gluten free, and I'll put that recipe down below. And I'm just going to do like a little slider so I can save my appetite for when all our friends come over to watch the big game. All right, so I'm just going to put a little bit of pork on there. So, and really, it's delicious just like this. You do not need to add anything else to it. And if I use a jarred or a bottled um, barbecue sauce, I use Sweet Baby Ray's. I don't get paid. They're not sending me free product. But this is our favorite. It's got a little smoky flavor. And we'll just look a little smidgy smidge on top. I'm also going to put on there, I'm sure my husband will not approve, I'm going to put on a little smidgen of that coleslaw. OMG. OMG. Put my little cornbread top on there. And there's the slider. Let me get it close up. And now the taste test. Miraculous. Oh, it's so good. You get creaminess from the the coleslaw with a little bite of the vinegar and then that smoky amazing savory pork with the bread that is some scrumptiousness so that is my recommendation for the best Super Bowl dish ever people will love you for it serve it with a salad perfection so enjoy the game be sure to tell me down below what book you think would go well with the pulled pork and the homemade coleslaw with homemade mayonnaise. And I will send you a little postcard in the mail. Thank you. And it's like a little prize. And don't forget to keep, keep your eye on NovelNoms.com. I'm trying to update it more with some interesting articles and things. As well as my husband's little cereal corner where he reviews cereal. His favorite cereals. I know. But they're hilarious. I love you guys. Have a great time. And drive safely. Drink responsibly. I love you all. See you next week. From classics to children's books, you never know what she's gonna cook when Russian makes novel moms.